Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use the FinHub API. I'm gonna be going over some examples on the data I was able to get. Now this API is free. All you need to do is go to their site and click on get a free API key. After you sign up and get your API key, you will be able to run this script. They do offer a premium version and with the premium version, you could get more data, but with the free tier, you should be able to get all the data I'm gonna be showing you guys today. So to start off with, we can get simple quotes. The current rate limit I saw was 30 requests per second. I do believe that the data requests are in real time. We can also get stock candles or open high, low, close and volume data. We were able to get intraday data along with daily, weekly and monthly. And these are all the parameters that you need to specify within the function. And for the examples I ran, I was able to get pre-market and aftermarket data as well. Now we can also get open high, low, close for crypto. And I believe this is via Binance. So here I just plotted it and you can see that this is the ETH USDT pair and I returned the actual data as a table. Now the free tier also includes social sentiment for stocks from Reddit and Twitter. Again, specifying the parameters here and the from and to dates are optional. So if you just leave them out, it should return the most recent. And I believe these are in hourly intervals. At times we do not get data from Twitter or Reddit. So as you can see, all of these come from Reddit. With API, we can also retrieve earnings calendar. The data that gets returned includes the estimates along with their actual value. We can also get earnings surprises. So the free tier will only return the last four quarters. We can also get the IPO calendar. Now you can set the dates way into the future. It should be able to return all the IPOs that are available at that time. Now with the next function, which I found very useful are the financials as reported which are very clean and organized. Now for this specific function, I have set basically everything to null except for the stock and the frequency, which can be either annual or quarterly. And I added the column called rep to show you where the data is coming from. So we get very useful information, which is all for free. Now in the next block, we're gonna get insider sentiment. The data that gets returned is monthly. So you need to set the stock, the from and to dates. Now the next function is insider transactions. Again, similar to the function above, this returns in monthly intervals. If no transactions were returned for a given month, then it'll skip over the month. So here we see a gap between month two and seven for 2021. Other than insider transactions, we could get basic financials, which includes the most recent, quarterly and annual. And I made the function return all. So you'll see four columns for the period, the series, which these are the most recent, the type and the actual value. So if we skip over some, you'll see some changes. So these are the quarterly numbers and you'll also be able to get the annual numbers. Now this API does return company news as well, which is pretty lengthy, which returns the timestamp, the headline, the URL to the images, the stock symbol, the source, the summary, and the URL which we can later use for sentiment analysis. Now continuing along, the last thing we're able to retrieve is the company profile. So here you'll be able to retrieve useful information regarding the company. All right, so let's go over the script to view the functions. Here we're gonna load up some packages. And once you sign up, you will need to enter your API key in here. And then you can run through these blocks for the examples. To get simple quotes, we just need to pass in the stock and our API key. And as we go through these functions, you'll see and notice a pattern where we build the URL, send a get request, extract the content, convert to a data frame, do the formatting, and then just return the data. Once you run this wrapper, you can go ahead and use it. You don't need to output the data as I did for the reports. You will be able to see this variable out in your environment. And for each of the examples, I pasted a link where you can get more information. So for the stock candles here, we need the stock we want to get data for, the resolution, whether it's intraday, so one through 60. And we can also get daily, weekly, and monthly. We need to pass in the from and to dates. By default, the to date will be set to today. And also your API key. Again, we build the URL, send the get request, extract the content, convert into a data frame, do a little bit of formatting, and then just return the data. And then we test the function to make sure it's working properly. And then it will display the data. For the resolution, if you're using daily, weekly, or monthly, you will need to pass in that parameter as a character. So single quotes or double quotes will do. For the crypto candles, this is the URL we need. We format the data as we did with the stock candles and then just return that data frame. If you wanna convert it to an XTS object, you will just need to grab columns two through six 
for the core data and ordered by the timestamp. And this will get you the data as an XCS object. Now for social sentiment, we need to pass in the stock, our API key, and according to the documentation, the from and to dates are optional. That's why I set these to null. But if you do want to pass them in, here we will test if the user entered a to and from date. If they did, we'll use the second URL. If not, then we will use this first one, which is the simplified version, but you will still need the stock and the API key. Again, we send a get request, extract the content, and as I mentioned earlier, sometimes data will not be available. If they do contain data, then we'll go ahead and extract that. Otherwise, it will just return null. We will row bind the results for Reddit and Twitter and return that data frame. So again, if you want to test that function, just pass in the stock and your API key. For the earnings calendar, all of these parameters are optional except for your API key. So depending on what the user enters, if all of these parameters are null, we're going to use the simplified URL. Otherwise, we will use the second one depending on what the user enters for these parameters. We're going to send our get request, extract the content, row bind the results using our bind list and return the results. So here you can test the function to make sure it's working properly by passing in your API key. To get the earning surprises, all of these parameters are optional. So what I did was just use the simplified URL since we're only able to retrieve the last four quarters anyways. And again, test the function to make sure it's working properly. To get the IPO calendar, we need to set the from and to dates and pass in your API key. So again, the first step is to build a URL, send the get request, extract the content, and row bind the results. Now the next block will be for financials. This one was a bit more complicated. And since there's a lot of parameters that we can use, I figured we would just use the stock and the frequency to retrieve this information since it's a little bit harder to get the access number and CIK code. So we are gonna use the simplified version of the URL that you see here in line 369. We're gonna send the get request, extract the content. And since there's list within list, we need to extract all the information within each each of those lists. So we're going to use L apply to pass in one through the length of our data. We're going to extract the list and within each of those lists, we get list for balance sheets, income statements, and cash flow statements. So we need to extract those for each of the file lanes. We need to convert that to a data frame by row binding our balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement into all. And then we can go ahead and add the report details that you see here. Finally, we returned all the information as a data frame. And once we go through the entire list for all the filings we were able to pull, we're going to use our bond list to row bind everything and return our data. So this is the way that it's set up. We would just need to insert the stock, the frequency, and pass in your API key. Now to get insider sentiment, we need to pass in the stock, the from and to dates, and our API key. As you saw from the previous examples, we need to build our URL, send the get request, extract the content, and row bind our results. Now for the next function, we're going to get insider transactions. The from and to dates are optional, but we need to specify the stock symbol and the API key. I set the from and to to null, but if you want to pass something in, again, it'll choose the URL most appropriate to the parameters you insert. We're going to send our get request, extract the content, and return our results as a data frame. Now the next function here is for basic financials. Similar to the other financials, some of these have lists within lists. So after we create our URL, after passing in the stock, the API key, and the metric, we're going to extract the content after we send our get request. And it's split up in three parts. So we get the most recent metrics for that day. So we're going to go ahead and assign that. We also get annual metrics and quarterly metrics. So we need to extract those from their given list. After we get the recent metrics, annual metrics, and quarterly metrics, we're gonna go ahead and R bind all the results. We need to reclass these columns and finally just return that data. So here's an example of what to run. You can view through the documentation if you only need a certain metric. But for this case, we're gonna extract all and then just subset to the metric we need after we get all of the information. Now for company news, we need to send the stock symbol the from and to dates and your API key. And this one is relatively simple as we just need to create the URL, send the get request, extract the content, roll bind our results, do a bit of formatting for the timestamps and return the data. So here's an example of how to run it. Now for this last function, we get company profile information. We just need to pass in the stock and our API key. The from and to dates are not appropriate for this function.
since we're just extracting information. So we build the URL, send the get request, extract the content, robine our results, and then output that data frame and make sure you test it out to make sure it's working properly. Now that was the final function within the free tier. Now what I also did was put all of these functions into a separate script so that we can just source all of these functions. So once you source the script, it'll load up the required packages. You just need to make sure you pass in your API key and line nine, and then it'll load up all the functions from our R markdown. And then all of these functions should appear in your environment and should be ready to use. So I'll go ahead and include these two scripts in my Patreon, and I'll post the link in the description in case you want to get them. But with that, guys, this concludes the video. I hope this was useful information. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.